So guys, I love my MacBook Pro. It's an absolute beast on its own, but there are some accessories I use every day that make working on this machine even more enjoyable. Here are some of my favorites for 2023. Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what is up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So the MacBook Pro is an amazing device. It recently got joined by the new M2 Pro Mac Mini here in the studio. I've done a couple of videos on that as well, and more are coming, but my MacBook is still my baby. It's still my workhorse and the computer from which I run not only this YouTube channel, but also my daytime business. Now, like I said in the intro, you can get a lot done with just this machine, but there are some accessories that make my life easier and that turn my MacBook into either a full-blown studio desk setup or the perfect travel companion, and I'm gonna show you both. So let's start off with a bang, and that is this beautiful Apple Studio display. I have waited for over six months between ordering this thing and actually getting it, but it was worth the wait. But that's a story for another day. Yes, I splurged and I got the tilt and height adjustable stand. Personally, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that this isn't simply the standard with all of them, but that's Apple. If they can charge you extra, they will. I also opted for the nano texture display, not because I think it looks better. I actually prefer the glossy look, but with all the lights I have set up here in the studio, it's impossible to keep this thing glare free and even harder to film it without seeing a ton of reflections of my lights. So for me, it is the better option. Also, I feel like the nano texture display is a little easier on the eyes for longer sessions and whenever I'm working with a lot of text. I try to be as paperless as I can in this office and for my daytime business, that means I work with a lot of PDFs and I mean a lot of PDFs. And for that, I like to use my favorite PDF editor, UPDF. And thank you so much to them for supporting this video. Now, apart from the fact that this is a super solid product, you can also use it across platforms on Mac, Windows, iOS, and Android with just one license. Of course, you can read and annotate PDFs, but it does much more than that. It has a really powerful editor, which to me personally, that is the most important feature. I've tried a lot of editors over the years, and usually it's the editing part where can get messy and things start moving around where you don't want them to. UPDF is super clean. You just hover over the text you want to change and everything stays exactly where it belongs. Of course, it also lets you fill out forms, which is another killer feature, no matter what business you're in. It has a super easy interface, just a few clean toolbars, and what you see is what you get. It's really easy to organize pages as well, if you need to change the order. And when you're done with the document, you can either save it back as a PDF or export it to pretty much any file type you want, including Microsoft Word. You can install it for free and you get the basic functions or get a plan, which is a lot cheaper still than most other PDF editors. And if you use the link in the description below, you will get 50% off your purchase at the time of filming. Anyway, I absolutely love this display. The speakers and the microphones are pretty amazing and the image is of course what you would expect. Super, super crispy. Not everything is perfect though. Like it has four ports in the back, which I really like, but only one of them is Thunderbolt 3 and the rest are just USB-C ports. The other thing I don't like is the webcam. It's absolute trash. I mean, really, really bad. Thankfully, I found some great solutions for both problems. Starting with the port situation, I have looked long and hard to find the best Thunderbolt hub, but many of the cheap options had a lot of bugs and even the more expensive ones were often quite limited in the types of ports they offered. So I had to suck it up and shell out the big bucks for the CalDigit TS4. I used to own a TS3, which has always served me really well. And to me, the TS4 is the holy grail of docks. It has all the ports I could possibly need. On the back, it has a 2.5 gigabit ethernet port, four USB-A ports, three Thunderbolt ports, audio ports, USB-C ports, and even a display port for those of you still using them. And I also really appreciate that the host port is on the back. I simply don't understand why most other docks would put it on the front because it always means that you have this annoying cable sticking out going into your computer. Anyway, there are some ports on the front, which is kind of useful, you know, for easy access. And really important if you're a creator are of course these two ports, the SD and the micro SD card slot. So if you're tired of trying to find a decent hub, I can highly, highly recommend this one. My new favorite mouse and keyboard duo is the Logitech MX Master 3S for Mac and the Logitech MX Mechanical Mini. Now I've been a fan of the Logitech MX Master 3 for a long time. It is the most ergonomic mouse I've ever used. The magnetic scroll wheel is 
is super fast. It's a game changer, really. And I don't think I can ever go back to video editing without having the scroll wheel available. Now, recently I got this MX Master 3S specifically for Mac in pale gray, and I absolutely love it. And my favorite feature is the quiet click. Just listen to it. When it comes to keyboards, I'm a bit finicky. I do like mechanical keyboards, but because they often have a really high profile, my hands get really tired and I find myself going back to the Apple Magic Keyboard because of its low profile. The Logitech MX Mechanical Mini combines the best of two worlds. You get all the satisfaction from those tactile mechanical keys and the beautiful typing noises it produces while maintaining that low profile so my hands or wrists don't get fatigued. And of course, I picked up the pale gray as well since I have a very specific look in mind for that dream desk setup the regular snow I'm building. And please do make sure you subscribe for that. I promise you it will be worth it. On top of the studio display sits my solution to that potato of a webcam, and that is the Insta360 Link 4K. And it is by far the best webcam I've ever used that isn't a full-blown mirrorless camera. At the height of the pandemic, I actually did rig up a proper mirrorless camera for my Zoom calls with clients, and of course that will give you the best possible image, but I kid you not, this thing comes awfully close, giving you a super crisp 4K image, but in some ways, this camera actually beats a mirrorless camera as a webcam, and that is because of the AI-powered software it has on board, as well as the tilt and swivel head. Think of this thing as a drone camera on top of your computer with a bunch of extra features. My favorite is the tracking feature. And unlike center stage on the Mac, which is just a software-based panning across a cropped image, you know, this camera actually tracks you across the room. It also has a desk view, which again is better than the built-in version on the Mac because of the actual tilt head. And it has a very cool feature for presentations whereby it recognizes a whiteboard and it will zoom into it so that your audience can focus even better on whatever you're presenting. I dedicated an entire video on this thing. I will put a link to that in the description below the video alongside links to all the products you see in the video, by the way. Now, if you use the Apple Studio display, one cable is all you need to power your MacBook. But if you don't have it hooked up to a display or you're using a display that can't really power your MacBook, you're gonna have to power the MacBook Pro separately. Of course, you can use Apple chargers for that, but I much prefer the charging solutions from Ugreen. If you've been to the channel before, I'm sure you've heard me talk about Ugreen because I pretty much use all their chargers for all my scenarios. I carry a 45 watt charger for my iPhone and things like my iPad mini. I think I have it at home right now. This 65 watt charger I actually use for my iPad Pro. And then the big boy here is the 100 watt charger. And that is my weapon of choice for the MacBook Pro. Now, when I say big boy, take it with a big grain of salt because these are all GAN chargers, so they're pretty small for what they can do. If you don't know, GAN stands for gallium nitride, which is an extremely efficient conductor, producing far less heat, allowing these chargers to be so small because there's virtually no need for cooling. What I like about this one over the Apple charger is that it's super compact. It has four ports, three USB-C and the USB-A. So it's basically all I need to take with me to charge all my devices and I can charge them all at the same time. Next up is this little guy here. This is the Tourbox Elite. And if you're into video or photo editing, this thing will change your life. Every wheel and button is customizable to suit your workflow. Or if you don't wanna bother with that, you can pick one of the many templates like the Final Cut Pro template or the Photoshop template. I'll keep it short for this video because I have a big desk setup video coming up soon where I'll talk about this thing in way more detail. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Now, before we move on to the more portable accessories, I want to give a big shout out to 12 South for making a product that is so solid that it has been around for ages and it's still being produced, and that is the Book Arc. It is one of the cleanest solutions to keep your Mac docked on your desk. It has these interchangeable rubber inlays, so whatever type of MacBook you have, it will fit super snug. It's really super simple and there isn't much more to say about it, but that very simplicity is probably the reason why this product is still around because it just works. Now, as you can see, I'm a clamshell kind of guy, so my MacBook is always closed and hooked up to display when I'm here in the studio, but I know plenty of people like to keep it open to use as a second screen. For that type of user, there is the Banks Infinity Stand. And this is a perfect little segue into the portable stuff because this thing actually folds down all the way so you can just slip it into any backpack and take it with you. I love, love, love this stand. I recently reviewed a similar stand by Banks for the iPad Pro and what I loved about that was the swivel mechanism 
with that extremely satisfying rattling sound, well, they took that and put that into this MacBook stand as well. It has this really lovely design, which might as well be, you know, created by Apple. It has holes in the back for ventilation and rubber in all the right places. And of course, the iconic rattle I just told you about when you spin it around. I mean, I don't know. I just can't get enough of that. They really did think about all the little details because the little chin that keeps the MacBook in place can be pushed in. So things are completely flush when you fold it back down, which is much easier for transportation and you won't be scratching any of your stuff. Really like this thing. And that is probably the nicest stand I have used so far. Speaking of transporting things, if you toss your MacBook Pro into a bag on a regular basis, you might want to put a sleeve on it. Those of you who know me a little bit know that I'm a sucker for cognac brown leather, which is why I really like this folio by Woolnut. They do make an actual sleeve as well, but I prefer having one with a zipper, so I'm sure nothing gets in or out. Woolnut is a Swedish design company and they use full grain Scandinavian leather on the outside and the inside is made of 100% natural wool felt from Germany. So nothing gets scratched or damaged, yeah? All right. The reason I like these sleeves so much is that you can use them as a coaster for your MacBook in a public place, you know, instead of just putting it down bare on the table. And as you can see, it fits perfectly. And then when you zipper it up, it's just this, you know, good looking, rugged little package. Speaking of public places, we talked about my favorite charger earlier, but in a public place, we don't always have a wall outlet available. And in those scenarios, I like to bring a beefy battery with me and they don't come much beefier than this one. This is the Omni Charge Omni 40 Plus. Now I can hear you thinking 40, surely that doesn't mean, yeah, it does. It actually means that this is a 40,000 milliamp hour battery. So you can bet you're behind that this will charge your MacBook Pro and then some. It has three USB-C ports, two USB-A ports, and get this, it even has an actual AC power plug. So you can hook up your blow dryer to this thing if you really wanted to. It comes in a nice rugged case with a charger, but I don't really use that charger because I use the Ugreen one that I have with me anyway. So we can save a bit of weight, you know? The tiny OLED panel on the front tells you exactly how much juice is flowing in and out, as well as how much juice is left on the battery. But the coolest part about this battery is that it's actually also a USB hub. So you can actually use this to turn one USB-C port into three and a couple of USB-A ports. If you're looking for something to charge basically anything you can carry, this is definitely your guy. Now, if you wanna do a quick conference call in the coffee shop or wherever you are, you're obviously not carrying your webcam and you can, of course, use the internal cam on the MacBook, but that's really not much better than the one on the studio display. Since most Mac users carry around an iPhone anyway, you might as well put those beautiful cameras to use, which you can do in macOS Ventura. Literally, the only thing you will have to bring extra is something to prop up your phone as a camera, which is why Belkin invented this little iPhone mount specifically specifically designed to mount your iPhone to your MacBook screen to be used as a webcam. No need for a special case or anything like that. This simply attaches via MagSafe onto your phone itself or whatever case you're carrying and voila, you're done. They even added this little kickstand here so you can use it to watch some content or maybe you'd like to just hold it like this, which is nice for texting. Now, a lot of you guys are always asking me what SSD to get. I've done a couple of videos in the past comparing the most popular ones, so you can watch those if you're interested, but this is definitely my current favorite. Not the design, I may be Dutch, but I never really understood the appeal of Mondrian, and I have no clue why Orico chose to use this for their SSD, but hey, it doesn't matter because this thing is ridiculously fast at 40 gigabits per second. You can get them in different speed categories, of course, all with matching price tags, and this fast one isn't cheap but it's still cheaper than internal Apple storage. And an external SSD has the advantage, of course, that you can use it between devices. Now, if you're gonna carry all of these little knickknacks, you're gonna need a tech pouch. For the longest time, I've been using this one by Peak Design, which I still love very much. But lately, I've been using a smaller one by Mujo, which actually follows a similar design choice. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's kind of this origami style, meaning it has pockets that fold open. But the thing is, this one is much lighter and it has a slimmer profile than the Peak Design. So this is the one I like to take with me on day trips and commutes. And the Peak Design is the one I'll take with me on longer trips. All right, guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe you saw a few things you hadn't seen before. If you did, please get one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.